On July 15th, the first batch of child tax cut credits hit the bank accounts of millions of Americans. They're going to receive their first monthly, first monthly tax cut payment. That payment, that payment from the expanded child tax credit is that we signed into law as part of my, our American Rescue Plan. It's one of the largest ever single tax cuts for families with children. And it's a reflection of our belief that the people of this country who need a tax cut aren't the folks at the top. They've gotten plenty of tax cuts. They're doing just fine. But it's the people in the middle, the folks who are struggling, who are just looking for a little bit of, my dad would say, a little bit of breathing room. A new study by the Urban Institute found that the pandemic relief programs, including child tax credits, will cut poverty nearly in half this year from pre-pandemic levels and push the number of Americans in poverty to the lowest level on record. The report showed poverty rates dropped among every demographic group, especially among children. But the drop in poverty has come at a cost. As the New York Times notes, annual spending on major programs are projected to rise fourfold to more than $1 trillion. And if more money doesn't come through, the relief that families are feeling now is sure to be only temporary, with many of these provisions already set to expire shortly. We actually have new exclusive Hill-Harris-X data on the matter. Let's take a look at that. And here's how the tax credit works. For every child under the age of six, a parent will get $3,600 a year. For every child six to 17, they'll get $3,000 per year. For example, a middle-class family with two young children who would expect to receive $7,200 a year to help raise their children. This will be the, they'll get the first half of this $3,600 starting today, today, today. And it'll be paid out at $600 a month. I believe this is actually a historic day. Historic day in the sense as we continue to build an economy that respects and recognizes the dignity of working class families and middle class families. The survey found 60% of voters said the child tax credits are too expensive and are no longer needed, while 40% said they should be extended. Roughly 80% of Republicans and 53% of independents say the child tax credits are too expensive, while 53% of Democrats said they should be extended. What's your take on this, Kim? Well, first of all, I'm a little bit confused, and maybe you can clarify something uh, for me on this. Maybe you know more than I do. But these, these tax credits, is this the tax... Uh, you know, when people would file their taxes at the end of the year, I don't have kids, so I don't really know. I, I, but uh, they get money back for having kids. But I was right. under the impression that this is just something that is now broken up throughout the year, that this isn't really any different. Instead of waiting for their for them to file their refunds and getting a big lump sum, they're now getting it in monthly allotments. Is right. that not what this is or is this is this extra? No, that's that's what it is. Uh, and we're we're two childless people talking about this policy, right. but a policy <laughs> that uh, that I actually I understand a lot of um, sort of the new uh, populist Republicans, uh, people like J.D. Vance, the hillbilly elegy officer uh, author who's running for Senate from Ohio, Marco Rubio, even people like Mitt Romney, at, at giving money to families for having children is actually a kind of welfare policy that Republicans are increasingly interested in because they are pro-family. And then many on the Democratic side, um, they uh, many like it because they like being more generous with, with welfare payments. I think right. the real, uh, I, I think the, 
you know, and again, I'm a libertarian, so I'm a little more skeptical of kind of, of uh, you know of more generous uh, benefits. But I think the selling point for them is, you know, it has gotten more expensive to raise children, dramatically more expensive, harder because a lot of the the so labor intensive things like child like childcare service, like education, healthcare, those costs have just gone up dramatically. You know, we have you know the cost of televisions has gone down, the cost of electronic goods. Which which is a really good thing, but the labor-intensive things, a lot of things having to do with parenting, with raising children, have gotten more expensive. Yeah. So this yeah. is, in some ways, a, a way to subsidize that, so so people don't don't give up on the project of having right. children. Well, you know, I have a lot of I have a lot of nieces and nephews, and I will say that it has been a big struggle for my siblings to put their kids in childcare. That cost is enormous. And this, so that really is a barrier to having children for a lot of people. And we are seeing that millennials and, and now I think Gen, Gen Z, are they getting old enough to start having children? People <laughs> are pushing back on having kids. They don't want to have children or maybe they only want to have one kid because the cost is so high. And that is something that ultimately, you know, we do see a decline happening in Europe, for example, with population where they're struggling. You've got Denmark that incentivizes its population, uh, trying to tell them, hey, have kids, we'll pay you. So I think that this is, it's really smart to look ahead and to say, hey, we're going to end up like every developed nation having a population decrease problem. Right. And what we want to do is encourage people to have children. We want people to feel like they can afford kids because, you know, it is very expensive. And so I'm really for this type of policy. I think this is great if it does relieve the stress on families. Right now, you know, cost of living is really high. Both parents have to work. Uh, it, it used to not be that way. When I was a kid growing up in Idaho, half of my friends, if not more, had stay-at-home moms. Not or, yeah, My dad was a stay-at-home dad. For, uh, I was raised by my father exclusively, and he was a stay-at-home. He was able to work from home from the time that I was uh, uh, like 12 years old or 13. So, uh, you know that. But a lot of people don't have that ability. They have to have two working parents, and it's super expensive. So I actually think this is fantastic. I think they should do more personally. While many families have received the first of the child tax credit payments, some have fallen victim to delays and poor communication from the IRS. According to a recent report on how the government is, resp is responding to the pandemic, the Government Accountability Office specifically pointed to the, R I the IRS's failure to properly communicate to people about their returns and payments, which is no surprise to me because I despise <laughs> the IRS. Um, you know, and that is a, that, that's an issue in general with expanding government, expanding payments, well, then you need more federal bureaucrats to administer them and to check on them and make sure everyone's getting exactly what they want, and then you open up avenues for waste and abuse. I, the, I think the, the goal, or like the libertarian and progressive goal, if we're to, is to find a way to you know efficiently give money directly to people. I'd rather spend money just giving it to people rather than on some massive bureaucracy, but that's always, that's always the, so making it as simple as possible and just giving people money directly, uh, you know, the kind of thing that Andrew Yang talks a lot about, why I have a lot of esteem for him. Um, but you know, the, the, more, the more involved the IRS is, the more right. fraught with, uh, with I mean, some, in some sense, the IRS makes political decisions. Uh, they, you know, right. they, go, they hunt people for wrong thing. Well, this is really interesting because it is, you know, um, w one argument I guess people might have is, well, why don't they just cut taxes? Yeah. So rather than having the IRS having, you know, having to deal with the bureaucracy of the IRS and waiting for them to send you the payments and making sure that your bank account or whatever it is, is, is accurate, the information, um, why not just reduce taxes to begin with? Uh, you know, and, and ultimately, even though I am in, I am very much in favor of something like this, I would prefer programs that give free child care to parents from birth. Uh, I would like to see that instead, personally, and I also would like to see the cost of housing go down. And I think those are actually the biggest barriers to people having families. And I don't know, you know, even though, like I said, I am a, I am definitely in favor of this policy for now, I just think that it's kind of a band-aid to the larger problem. And we need to be focused on that larger problem, the which IR is cost of living. The IRS knows exactly how much money you owe, and, and yet you have, they make you figure it out yourself. And if you get it wrong, they come after you. It doesn't make yeah. any sense to me, <laughs> but that's the way it is. Uh, thanks for watching What America's Thinking, and we'll see you all next time.